Yo, it's Ross. I don't know if you guys are like even know about this fruit. Gooseberries. It sounds made up, right? I mean, like, unless you're from Europe, you probably you're, you're, you're not understanding what I'm saying. But at least in America, we like hear the word gooseberry and we think, is that real? Same thing with uh, the jujube, I find is like two of the fruits that people just don't believe me when I say that I grow them. But they are real fruits, guys. Um, this is my little bush here. It's Hinomaki Red is the name of the variety. I guess it's uh, Asian in some way. Maybe it's probably Japanese. And uh, this thing has produced a ton of fruits. My gumi behind it, you guys can kind of make this out in the video. This produced even more fruits, I would argue. But the gooseberry is a very, very productive plant and this area you can see it's in the shade it's noon basically and it's getting no light it hasn't received any light pretty much all day maybe in the morning it might get some light that comes kind of seeping in here but I'll tell you this is such a great plant for so many temperate climates that I would just highly recommend you grow it uh, just for the ease of growing it and it's you know you just throw a net over it, it doesn't get very big I mean maybe they'll get by like six by six like this gumi does back here and you could just throw a net over it very easily get underneath the net and harvest to your heart's content i harvested quite a bit i went away for vacation this past weekend for fourth of july and i just harvested as many of these as i could put them in a bowl that way i had some fresh fruit um, from my own orchard my own garden um, that i could take and eat with me on this on this trip and coming back now the fruits are beautiful. They're super red, super productive, this plant. Um, I already harvested, like I said, a ton of them. And the remainder, the remainder of the fruits that I didn't actually eat, I dried. I actually put them in the dehydrator and dried them into gooseberry raisins. And I found that they, believe it or not, they didn't come out that great. A bird got to this one here. My net isn't totally perfect by the way but I've had so many of these berries at this point that if I lost them all it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because I've already eaten so many of them but they're about the size of a grape if anyone you know about the average grape that you'll find here maybe in the United States they have a part here where there's a little bit left over from the plant and then this is kind of the bottom of the flower back here this was the flower, and you can kind of remove this if you want. It's all edible. It's not gonna kill you. You can remove this stem, and you're left with pretty much a grape. I mean, that's kind of the best way I like to describe them. They have, they have some seeds in them that you don't notice really at all. They're not hard. Um, they're a bit larger than a grape. The seeds in a grape, it's a tart grape, so it's not totally sweet. When they get super red like this, depends on the variety. They will be as sweet as a grape or uh, not so ridiculously sweet because there's always some of that tartness to it that kind of cuts through it. And for me, I think I actually enjoy them almost as much as some of the really good grapes that you can produce in a, in a backyard setting. If you have your own grape vines, you're in for a treat as well. So crisp. It's so refreshing and um, I'm just a huge fan of this fruit. I really am. You can come out here and eat these all day, not be phased at all, not even get sick. It's nice because I think this isn't a slip skin grape where the, the pulp pops away from the, the skin and you have two different flavors. This is all in one. Um, but it's just so, like something about it is just so enjoyable to eat. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing bothers it other than the birds. There, there can be some disease depending on where you guys live, but for me, there's none. Also, just give it some organic material in this first couple of years. Really put down that mulch. It'll take off and you'll have fruit probably in the second year. The other nice thing about this, guys, is that you can, um, you can actually just take a branch off the tree in the wintertime and then stick it in the ground in the spring 
or even in, before these things wake up, take off a branch, stick it in the ground, you'll have yourself a whole other plant. It's so easy to propagate. Let me show you the plant a little close up on it. When you get an idea, I mean the thumbnail, the video, has a good idea of the production on this thing. But they're just, they just get loaded underneath the, uh, the branches here. They do have thorns, and as I said, I picked most of this, but I'm telling you, the entire thing was loaded with these berries, with these grapes. And it's nice because if you are a fan of grapes, it's like an early grape. It's not a grape that uh, ripens in the summer or at least during August, like you know most, your, most of our grapes do here in this climate. And then you have the muscadine grape, which I also grow, which is a fall grape. So it's kind of like, you get grapes all year. You know, between this, um, actual grapes, and then the muscadine, I'm set. Um, yeah. This is the only variety, by the way, that I've really enjoyed. So I've tried other varieties and I just wasn't a big fan of them. The texture on some of them tends to change too quickly and they turn into like a, a very um, grainy pear that I'm not necessarily a big fan of. These stay crisp and that's what I want. I want them to, you know, resemble a grape. I don't want to be out here eating a pear grape. You know what I mean? Like, and some pears just have the worst texture with that graininess. So that's not fun. It's not good. This Hinomaki Red, I highly recommend. There's some other varieties out there that you could definitely recommend or people have recommended. This one here is still a bit unripe, but it's edible. You know, it's uh, probably a bit more tarp, a bit more crisp, less sweet. It's still very, very good. I, I like to eat them even when they start to turn red like this. And I'll just start snacking on them from that point until they turn like perfectly red once they get this perfectly red part, or when they get to this part, they, are, they become a bit more mushy, less crisp, more sweet. Oh, it's so good. And there's a good berry flavor, you know? It's not like, um, some grapes can be kind of bland. These have a pretty good berry flavor to them. So, that's the gooseberry, guys. We've done other videos on them in different years and things. This is my most successful year yet, and I think this particular gooseberry is in like year four. And it just really has been a solid, solid producer. It takes a bit of time. And then, by the way, right next door is the uh, relative, the Jostaberry, or the Yostaberry, however you want to think about it. And this is a cross between the current and the gooseberry. And we've got some really interesting, very good berries that I'm gonna share with you guys in a different video. We'll do a separate thing on that, but that's what they're all in, the same family. They all grow so easily, so well. Like I just planted that plant there, I just stuck a cutting in the ground. So it's that easy. There's no, there's no reason not to grow these, I think. Um, kids will love them, there's thorns, but this Yosta berry doesn't have any thorns and you're set. So, small plant, easy to net, problem free, what's not to like? See you soon.